So I became self-unemployed about three years ago after having spent most of my career at Autodesk and my bucket list was huge. So I got back in the shop and I started making things. I was working on taking a 1950 Chevy pickup truck and making it an electric vehicle. And then I built this canoe with my son and some friends. And now I had time to go even go canoeing. I continued to work on generative design, you know, using a computer to help design, not just document stuff. And here's a, here's a chair we did where we took a MIG welder and turned it into a metal 3D printer. You know, and in addition, my family really wanted um, to go to safari, you know, to go to Africa on safari. And this was not on my bucket list. In fact, it was on my fuck it list, you know, but I, I, I was wrong. It turned out to be an awesome trip. And it made me realize just how fragile life is and how amazing it is that us humans made it out of Africa, given that we're not the strongest or the fastest. It was just creativity. And that thought was a perfect backdrop for the current crisis. You know, but instead of a huge carnivore, we're fighting the enemy this time is a microscopic virus. We all read about it and then started saying to ourselves, this is really going to be a big global deal. And we all said to ourselves, what are we going to do about it? Now, a few people reached out to me to see if we could help with open source ventilators. Everyone thought ventilators were going to be the equipment that we most needed. But people started to warn us that the PPE problem was really serious. And if there wasn't PPE, no nurses or doctors were going to be around to put us on ventilators. Um, and then we started reading reports in the newspapers and hearing from local doctors and nurses how bad the situation was, wearing garbage bags to do intubations. And so the first thing everyone thought about was N95 masks. But without face shields, N95 masks were getting soiled easily and had to be changed all the time. So the design challenge became, how can we make lots of face shields really quickly and cheaply enough so that we could donate them to everyone who needed them? You know, basically use whatever's available and in a ridiculously short time frame, turn it into something useful. And so that's what we did for PPE, built from whatever we had at hand. We thought about 3D printing them, but decided we couldn't make them fast enough. But my friend Chris Taggart had this great idea. We could buy hats wholesale for like a buck and a half each. So what if we could take a piece of plastic and attach it to the hat? So we tried some fasteners, but we eventually landed on just snipping the brim and cutting the plastic and then just snapping it into, then snapping it into place. Um, so we went to work using the tools we had. Uh, we got some friends to start cutting and folding them. And for all of us, all of us who built prototypes and one-offs, this was a huge shift in our mentality. How are we gonna make hundreds of these face shields? So we got more friends and families involved. They, they assembled the first few hundred face shields and we worked out the kinks and the designs and we built some tools and we built some templates. And uh, the one thing I must say, it's been a real pleasure working with fan, you know, friends and family through this most difficult crisis and all trying to lend a hand. We also worked with some nurses in the local hospitals who were desperately in need of PPE. And they delivered them into the emergency rooms and the ICUs of the local hospitals. They had just staged a walkout because they were being forced into what they considered unsafe conditions. One nurse told us if three months ago we had used PPA, the PPE the way we're using it now, we would have been fired. And as we got them in the hands of the people, we got all kinds of encouragement. And after all, this was an unconventional design. And we had no idea what the reaction would be. Um, what became clear is it wasn't just nurses and doctors, it was everyone on the front lines who really needed the protection. You know, and the need was acute and it was seemingly endless. So the question became, how are we gonna make thousands? So we published an instructable, our friend Hans made an animation, Chris made a video showing how to cut and assemble the shields. Um, and we put together a GoFundMe that's raised over $50,000. So thanks to everybody who's contributed. Uh, we really appreciate it. Our friend Emily Pilladin and the girls at Girls Garage jumped in to help. And we had people from all over, friends, neighbors, strangers, volunteered to help. Several companies like Silent Nanotech and um, our friends at Bill Chrysler, they all jumped in with dozens of people to help cut and fold and assemble them. Um, sports teams like the Red Sox and the Giants and the Warriors all donated hats. Companies like Zendesk gave us boxes of hats. 
And the shop just became this steady stream of stuff coming in and stuff going out. And we were now able to make and deliver more than a thousand. The enthusiasm of the volunteers was great, but the roadblock were the hospital administrators. They wanted us to fill out reams of paperwork about our F FDA and NIO certifications. And they often did it, you know, so the nurses were the ones who got it in there. And they often did it in the face of threats, you know, of real retribution from hospital administration. And then the folks on the front line said, how about a positive air pressure respirator? The shields are so good. So the design challenge started again. You know, could we make a papper from stuff we could buy at Home Depot? Uh, our friend Philip, who's been an engineer on Indy race cars, he jumped in. So we, talk, we took a store-bought fan, a vacuum, a vacuum cleaner filter, and a battery, and we're just starting to make positive air pressure respirators and thinking about how to scale production and hoping the old supply chains kick in. It's absolutely crazy what we're all doing. It's been a colossal systemic failure. And I walked into the bathroom this morning at the shop, and I thought this picture just summed it all up perfectly. You know, the shit has hit the fan, and we're all running out of toilet paper. But it's important to remember why we're doing this. It's the nurses and doctors and all the other people on the front lines who have really and truly been the heroes of this tragedy. They've risked their lives, they've risked the lives of their families to help all of us. And we all, we owe them a tremendous amount of gratitude. Thanks.